Welcome back to my channel, guys. Today we're going to review Centrifuge. So this is a top-down view of this project. You can see that um, it is mostly green. I consider it not a super small market cap, but it is one of the, on the smaller ends. Um, but that's the riskiest thing about it, uh, which is not very risky considering uh, the potential of this project. Um, but you can see majority of this thing is healthy. Um, you know, and this project's predicate uh, success depends heavily on success of Polkadot. So it does have that to uh, be something you consider. Okay, so let's start with what is a top-down view of what Centrifuge, and by the way, this is also going to be a review of uh, Altair. So Centrifuge, Altair, these are both projects in the Kusama Polkadot ecosystem. So uh, Centrifuge, Centrifuge, uh, this is the CFG token, and Altair is the AIR token. Um, and this is for Polkadot, and this is for Kusama. Um, and so the, my review is pretty much the same for both of them, uh, both of these projects. I don't know what happened there. Okay, so that being said, uh, I'll get back into the review. So what problem and uh, market does this project currently solve? Um, real world assets to NFTs, okay? So uh, to turning your car into equity, turning your house into equity. Uh, let's say I have a refrigerator and I wanna use it. Well, what I can do is say, hey, refrigerator, you're expensive. I want to like um, order some device or process or something so that I can earn more yield on my fridge because it's locked capital. So let's say I use my fridge as collateral. Uh, I use it to get some machine and now I could sew clothes really fast, right? And then that uh, now that machine is put, putting yield and I use the payments that I make from the revenue from that machine into paying off the loan. And, uh, and that way, um, I end up making more income from the things I already own. So I'm not only am I getting to use my fridge, but I also bought more capital, and that capital is now earning me money. So that is an example of like turning a real world asset into an NFT. So the first app that we see on this project is the Tin Lake app. And that app is, um, the first real app is Tinlink, and that app is where, you know, they're doing this, turning real world assets into NFTs. And basically you have a process for doing that. Um, and, you know, you create trust relationships with businesses and, uh, and allow for a process for those NFTs to have that layer of trust. So Tinlink, um, first app the, on Centrifuge, access the Ethereum liquidity, invest in real world assets. So this is basically, um, you know, like if I um, want to use cryptocurrency, I could buy NFTs and buy real world assets. So I can buy that person's fridge. Um, and his loan from his fridge. And, and now let's say it's a 7% yield, right? And so now I have a loan. And so in the past, only banks could do that kind of stuff. But using decentralized systems, anyone could fund anyone so long as the collateral is legitimate. So um, one example of a business that's already doing business with uh, uh, Centrifuge is you know, using, take getting a short-term loan um, to buy homes and um, renovating those homes and then selling them. Um, so it's a short-term loan. You know, so that's, that's called New Silver. That's one of the companies that's using uh, Centrifuge. So integration into DeFi protocols is now possible. So you're accessing, why even use blockchain? Why would you even use blockchain for, um, to, to, for turning real-world assets into NFTs? Well, it's because you can access uh, all that liquidity. Uh, and, and you don't need a bank to approve. Like, think about a bureaucracy of a bank. A bank is going to need someone to review and, you know, like if you set up a process, you know, all of the bureaucracy. What, what this allows for, what cryptocurrency allows for, what Centrifuge allows for is streamlining the process 
for turning real world stuff, unlocking the, 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 the capital of real world stuff. But it doesn't even have to be stuff. It could be things like um, I could be, you know, here's an, I'll keep going into the examples to um, elucidate on exactly like the different um, types of uh, ideas that we can use this for. So in, um, let's see here. So, you know, as of June 21st, they have, you know, they, they keep having more value locked up. Um, you know, it's more B2B apps. Let me, I'm like going off on a tangent, not reading my stuff, but that's because this project like took me a lot, a while to get it. And I'm just trying to, um, you know, make it, uh, easy to understand. So here's an example, another example, let's say you have an invoice of a, which is, you know, an invoice is a financial record and out of this invoice, it pops an NFT, you know, and, um, that NFT can now, um, you can now, that NFT is now an asset. Right. So like and, and so it, it could hand it, it can hand off that NFT um, to anyone uh, and, and, you know, it, it becomes uh, liquid. So here's exactly um, an overview of how it works. Well, here I want I have an example. There we go. OK, so let's say company A, we need a widget for X and we'll pay you when X is complete. Right. So this is company A. Company B says, OK, I'll, I sign an agreement pop, this agreement exists, right? And that is the invoice. They send the invoice. So this is step one, step two, step three is they send the invoice back to company A. A, a company A signs the document. We will pay $100, right? Um, and so then company B turns that invoice into an NFT, right? So um, to, un, you know, to keep following this process here. So first, the company says we need something. You know, they sign the agreement. They send it the paperwork here. The company A signs it. They say they'll pay something. This company builds the widget, turns the turns the loan, uh, in, turns A's loan into an NFT, and they get they put that into uh, cryptocurrency, and that and they get DAI back, and then they get like ninety dollars, for example, right? So they get some money less the, you know, interest rate, right? So this company gets paid up front because this guy doesn't have the $90, right? He, he said, when, when, when X is complete, you know, when X is complete, I will pay you back, right? But this allows for B to trust A. It allows for A to create a loan, you know, and B simply, you know, like, um, and, and B and A agree to this. And you, the, the people who give the loan are you, MakerDAO, um, you know, Ethereum people who buy the NFT and now they can earn yield from A, right? So uh, basically, you know, this company, it allows for companies to move faster. So this company could keep pumping out products and sell them for a 90% of what they would normally sell them for because they get paid up front. And then they could flip that into buying more machines, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So that is just um, the type of stuff, you know, like there's a lot of different things that could be used from this type of protocol. So and, and it's we're talking about a multi trillion dollar industry um, and, and, and I'm just going over basic stuff here. Um, but, you know, like it could be music. It could be, you know, like there's a, just, a, you know, like a lot of different things. It depends on your partnerships here. But what this company does is it allows for you to automate the process of turning agreements, legal agreements into things that exist in the cryptocurrency. So you have like the legal world and it goes into the crypto world as an NFT. And these NFTs have a trusted process for, so that investors can now buy them so that you can access liquidity from anyone instead of just banks. So how does this work exactly? Um, to go in a little more detail, here's the Tin Lake Pool. Um, and so here's you are as an investor. You're an Ethereum user, and you're going to use the Centrifuge app, or you're going to use the Altair app on Kusama or Polkadot, and um, you're going to see all these listed list of different projects that you can invest in. And these uh, asset originators, they go through, they submit ownership proof of ownership of the assets that become collateral, like that refrigerator in my earlier earlier example, and then that mints an NFT. They take their NFT, they put it into the, the Tin Lake pool, and they get DAI back. They get the DAI back. And so that's like that company, Company A, who can now take and keep flipping their products. You know, um, They can keep flipping products and flipping products 
uh, at a lot faster of a pace. They don't have to wait for anyone because they get the money up front. And these investors are willing to take the loan of the, those who are in debt. Um, and, and so now they are the, the beneficiaries rather than banks. It's any individual. Dude, I don't even know how banks are going to survive. That's a tangent here. But, dude, like if there was ever someone to short from the old system, it would be the banks. Because they're gone, man. Like the banks are gone. Like, um, and that's why you see this oppressive. Like right now, at this particular time of making this video, there is some really oppressive legislation coming out. Um, you know, and so I do suggest anyone who's investing in crypto to call your representatives, because uh, the banks are going to do everything they can to survive. But maybe they, you know, but I don't know how they're going to survive with this t kind of technology existing. Okay, back to the topic in hand. So NFT documents or invoices, these are, you know, assets that can be used to, you know, foster all of these things. Um, so basically, in effect, the NFT is a legal agreement that is used as collateral for DAI. And businesses in the middle of the transaction can um, take the invoice and then, it, you know, get cash and paid up front. Right. So that's everything we just went over. And another thing to consider in the case of a default, there will be claims companies that will exist. So, yes, these investors are taking on some risk. But what they can do is they can get they can give um, this this NFT to this claims company and they this claims company, we execute claims in the real world. So they'll go pick up Frank's refrigerator if he didn't pay his loan and they'll give you die in some less amount for their efforts. Um, so yes, the investors take on that risk, and these companies will exist right here, uh, claims companies that will execute the legality of the NFTs. So you know that's how all of this basically breaks down from a very high up level. Okay, so now to dive into other details about this project. So future increase in demand for the token, I did arrive at that conclusion. A future market excitement from price momentum likely, I do think that is the case. Um, I think that as far as the social media awareness, it's, it's a lower um, than a lot of projects, and I haven't seen them doing a lot of marketing quite yet. As far as major upcoming events, this is going to be a fast mover. There's going to be constant news in the Polkadot Kusama ecosystem ex because the way that Polkadot – this is one of the reasons I've been very bullish about P Polkadot and Kusama is this project is going to move at lightning speed just like any other project that's on Polkadot and Kusama because of the tool sets that are available. So they can just program like regular code um, because of the uh, – once again, because of how Kusama and Polkadot is um, designed. So the major upcoming events, they're, they're going to have you know mainnet in Polkadot sometimes early next year. Uh, but if you want to participate in this ecosystem soon, uh, Kusama is, you know, imminent, imminent uh, release for the new K Kusama crowd loan auctions. And I will participate in the crowd loan auctions, um, locking up Kusama in the crowd loan auctions um, for this project. This is actually the project that I'm going to be putting the most uh, Kusama in. I will say money needed to move price up decreases. Um, you know, and uh, okay, so regarding inflation, inflation is irrelevant for this thing, even though, it, you know, like in the beginning, uh, distribution's not going to be that even. But this thing is more like a, a company ownership. It represents ownership um, of the uh, entity. And by the way, on-chain governance decides the burn rates for the fees um, that happen with this thing. So that, that's like a dividend. Um, so it's designed very well. The token's designed very well. Uh, both Air Token, once again, this is for CFG Token and the Air Token. Um, so, you know, like uh, it's designed very well indeed. Um, so, it, you know, distribution doesn't matter. Even if 1% of the supply was released, it doesn't matter because the token represents ownership of this entity. So I, I imagine that is just like shares of a company. You know, like I, I, I'm not supposed to say that, but this is like this thing looks security like. Um, but it's not, it's on a decentralized system. So it's a decentralized government. So anyone can participate. And frankly, the government could go stick it where the sun, does, sun doesn't shine. Um, and so as far as recent price action, um, the... I think that this it, it, the price action is kind of tame, so that's a very good thing. Um, low market cap, uh, it is it's it's not one of the highest ones. Um, it's not one of the lowest ones. So I just put you know that as one of the risky areas. It's like half a billion market cap, uh, fully diluted. Uh, you know, and so you can participate in the release. You know, it's actually I'm actually going to put it's a low market cap because you can participate in the release of those tokens, uh, both air and centrifuge. Tokens on the sell side to decrease. Niche. Hey, guess what? This thing has a live serving niche. It's doing it right now. You know, they have New Silver as one of their customers. They have 25 million already locked up. And guess what, guys? Uh, there is an exponential 
um, trend in their adoption that I've spotted. And if you ever know anything about VC investing, you are looking for, let me, let me just do this right here exponential um, growth in their services provided. So I'm just going to say that. Okay, so um, as far as governance, it basically just captures this thing. Governance represents ownership, upgrades, risk uh, models. The, you know, it, It's basically control of the system, and so high-value people will remain in control of it. Just um, strategic partnerships, um, the Web3 grants, uh, they they got Web3 grants for Substrate Go API client, so it proves their ability to code and thus their vetted team. Um, they also have Substrate uh, Ethereum Bridge that they're going to be building, uh, and they ex they showed their ability to do that for the Web3 grant program. Um, and also major onboards. Um, most there's very likely to be huge onboards. In fact, they said institutional asset providers in the pipeline. By the way, Polkadot and Kusama is where the institutions are. Just going to put that out there. Um, MakerDAO also is on this system, they have a partnership with MakerDAO. Uh, as far as a moat external transfer inhibitor, um, if, you know, they, they will streamline the process of real-world NFT generation, uh, which will give them a massive lead. I don't know of any other people that are doing this quite yet very well. Um, so long as they keep thriving and striving, I imagine they will stay ahead, and so they will likely experience growth um, pressures. Uh, but I imagine as long as they're striving, they're going to stay ahead of the competition because they're pretty much ahead right now. So, and, you know, the, like the first of this basic design that I've seen. So impressive achievements of their leadership. Um, as far as that, Lucas Vogslang, which is the CEO, the CEO started um, – Basically, yeah, he's st started several companies. He worked at this Tavolia company as an engineering manager, and that company did a billion dollars in invoices. So he's seen a billion dollars with his eyes. He didn't make it himself, but he was part of something that became a billion dollar entity. So that is experience that's valuable, as well as, well as Martin uh, Trinsel, uh, which both come from Tuala. Um, <clears throat> so I put the CEO score as 6.8. Uh, you know, first time CEO is the risk factor, but they have experienced as managers and they've seen success firsthand. So that's a, a plus in my opinion. Long-term vision and mission, uh, change the rules of trade to foster economic opportunity everywhere. So that's, uh, you know, like they're changing the rules of trade. Hey, guess what? That's what crypto is. That's what we're all here for. Um, evidence that um, management is trustworthy. Yes, they're vetted. You know, they, they uh, have some good plus factors there. So I, the team looks pretty good to me. Um, what are those? They're straightforward, consistent, valuable information, understanding. They got that Web3 grant, those kind of things, proving their ability to code. They also have working products. They also have business, business that's live right now. As far as developer motivation, funds, um, you know, available for that and the ecosystem and plus governance, on-chain governance to decide that stuff. Value of service provided to increase there, you know, once again, yes, uh, because you have valuable people involved. Partnerships are good. Um, best of competition. Team has majority control. The team is, does have control of this through the token. Large business models to demand the token. I expect that to be actually one of the better ones for this because most likely uh, it'll be used for investments, but also the, for using the network, like um, those businesses that um, are going to be interacting with this network and taking out loans, etc., and you know participating in the network. User experience is an irrelevant thing um, because it's business logic, business uh, workflows. Uh, so they're, they're going to do what uh, is going to be help their bottom line. As far as move, move, first mover, um, yeah, I, I imagine that they, they seem to be the first mover like at that I know of right now. Obviously, that you know, there's a million projects that I have to get through. Uh, more people um, using the project. Uh, massive, you know, it's a mar massive market opportunity. We're talking about trillions, trillions and trillions and trillions of unlocked capital because, you know, the banking system can't, like, it's not even designed properly to be able to do what this project is doing. Um, you know, uh, unlocking all that capital that exists in the world. So, you know, uh, that's, okay, so as far as tokens used for services and governance, yes, the token does meet that case. It's liquidity provider for rewards, governance, staking, um, and the pay transaction fees, which is important. Those transaction fees is kind of like an, a dividend because it burns them. Transactions, NFT, Mint, Anchor, Tin Lake, financial transactions, um, CFG, you know, it's ownership. It's basically ownership of the platform. That's both for the air and the centrifuge tokens. Value of the target market is large. This is a uh, big biz, biz, big. One of the things that I, when I was watching like hours of content to, to get my view of these guys, 
uh, is big business gets loans for much lower rates than smaller businesses despite low default rates amongst small businesses. So think about that, guys. There's a massive market here, and we're talking about trillions. Okay, um, is I think I hit everything. Oh, one of the things to think about, it's one of the more generous projects um, as far as for crowd loans on how many tokens they give. Um, and, you know, it's going to hit 50% release schedule sometime in early next year for the centrifuge. Uh, but I, once again, I don't even think these are like, I don't even think the distribution is important when a project has a token designed um, that to represent true ownership. Because then if I'm a, if I'm involved with this project, I'm going to just remain ownership, just like uh, the, the C Jeff Bezos, right? He owns all his shares from Amazon, you know, only sells a little bit. Um, when you, you know, like if you're really part of a project, you're just going to maintain your uh, shares. Okay, so guys, um, that is it for this review. Next up is patrons only content, which I will provide uh, right now. But as far as the review of Centrifuge, um, uh, I like uh, if you like this kind of content, I, the Centrifuge is a strong project, and um, I'll just leave it at that for the non patrons. But uh, if you like this kind of content, please like and subscribe. I look forward to putting out the, the most investigative, uh, in depth research uh, out there for crypto.